Nonetheless, I do want to talk about something very important. Uh, you know, the Up Yours Club. Woohoo! Uh, you know, we are debuting our exclusive club, which is now open to anyone. It's free to join. All you have to do is give us your email address. You go to upyoursclub.com, um, and you can send us a one-time tip or an ongoing non-tax-deductible donation. Now, you have to talk to your tax attorney to determine if this donation is taxable or non-taxable or whatever, a tax-deductible. I can't tell you if it is or isn't. How you I'm choose simply to fill gonna- out your taxes is not mine and Danny's business. That's, That's right. all I'm saying. If you choose to even fill them out all together, because taxation is theft. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to ask you if you're familiar with something. It, uh, GoPuff. Now, if I said the word GoPuff to you and I said it's an app and it delivers things to your house, you would think, was this app started by Willie Nelson and Snoop Dogg? That's right. All right. Well, are we talking Snoop, not, Snoop Dogg, Puff Puff Give? What are we talking about here? No, I, Puff Puff Pass. Puff Puff Pass. Why are you so old? Puff, I did it on purpose give? just because I knew it would irritate the crap out of you. But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, Puff. Isn't that the Harry Potter thing? No. That, that's not the Harry Potter thing? No. So, uh, Go, Puff is a digital convenience store backed by uh, SoftBank. And uh, this mm-hmm. weekend, so this is being recorded, uh, you know, at the, at the beginning of April. And uh, right now, on Hulu, you can go watch the documentary about WeWork. WeWork's largest investor was a company called SoftBank of Japan. It was a huge $47 billion flop. Now, this app called GoPuff, the digital convenience store, sounds like a cannabis Mobile dispensary to me, <laughs> but apparently it's not. It's a huge bummer. Well, but look, here, here's what I like about it. The story actually is, and, and Danny sent me this story, and the, the story actually is is two college kids out of Philly, right, decided to Terrible start Terrible town, this company. good sandwiches, but the whole town is stupid. <laughs> started it smells this like a sewer. Where they're going Philadelphia to start smells like a sewer. Delivering things to a bunch of their college, you know what I mean, kids. Crap started that with other booze, places, right? The fact that I didn't know there was a delivery app that delivers in my city that I can just download, and it's worth nearly $10 billion, which, you know, the government printed so much money last year, valuations, the cost of goods, nothing's going to make sense in the next 10 years, because it's going to be inflated all high heaven. It already the, doesn't make sense. I, it's, yeah, it's already through the sky. It, none of it makes sense. We've talked about that like crazy. You know, I do, look, I, the, the quote from this article I think is great. And again, going back to the digital convenience store, the, the different aspect versus right. DoorDash and Postmates and stuff. We have people from all walks of life ordering GoPuff, whether it's a mom who needs her diapers for or a baby products delivered or a pet owner needs pet food. And that, look, that's the deal, right? Like what, for decades now, you, you you don't want to go all the way to Walmart. You don't want to go all the way to HEB or whatever. You just want to walk in, get the one thing you need, and get yep. out. Pet food, whatever. And you're willing to go into that 7-Eleven and pay and twice overpay. as much for yep. the Tylenol, twice as much for, you know, or in some cases three and four times as much, right, for yeah. whatever, diapers, whatever it may be. You order from this place, you're paying the same fee, but it's delivered to your door, right? I. I remember once in my, you know, early adulthood, I was living still with my folks. And, um, you know, my dad's like, anything you want, you put it on the list. He goes to Costco, Sam's Club. It's his whole Saturday routine. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we're in dire need of Q-tips. He's like, well, you know, it's Monday. I'm not going back to the store until Saturday. I just walked into Walgreens, bought a small, it was 3 or $4. He's like, right. you realize, my, here's me doing my father's accent. Now. You know how much I pay? I buy big bucks. How much you know I pay? <laughs> Four dollars. You buy small box. Four dollars. You're stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> and I agree with your father in this. Instance. Yeah. So well, uh, you know, but that's. I'm the allowed point. to do that accent, by the way. I'm brown. <laughs> you can't cancel me. But look here, I, I agree. That's why I think this is genius in the way that it's being marketed versus your Uber right. versus your other places that do very similar types of things that and allows them more leeway. It makes more sense. Now, the name in itself is dumb. It's yes. dumb. It has nothing to do with convenience store delivery or whatever and, it is. And, and my, my feeling is in the future when they get acquired, because I don't think this business exists without an acquisition. 
I think CVS, but I doubt it's going to be CVS. My guess is going to be Walgreens. I'm making a prediction right. based on no information, based purely on I'm a genius. I continually predict where the market is going. Uh, and I have a, I got a 32 in my ACT. I have an IQ exceeding 140. I'm brilliant. I'm a soothsayer. I can see the future. Sure. Yep. <laughs> Uh, because people that claim that are that. Yes. But all right, always. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, you can't tell me that I'm not. It's 2021. I could. It just wouldn't do any good. Yeah. You identify as a genius. Yes, I get it. I do. I, I identify as a billionaire, and the bank refuses to refer to me that way. <laughs> Those bigoted jerks. So, I think Walmart comes along and buys them, and I think they. I think there's a future where they take all the analytical data mm-hmm. from. All of the orders, and they say, listen, you guys are going to stock these 15 items. And I, I don't know how they – they deliver right now with contract delivery of drivers. I presume they're not delivering in vans. They're going to have Sprinter-type vans. They're going to have the you know, the Amazon Prime vans or whatever. And they're just going to have a stock of the, the hottest-selling 20 items. And they're just every morning they're going to go fill up at the at their distribution center or a Walgreens store, whatever. And those fifteen or twenty items are always going to be in stock. So the van drivers can they're going to because they're going to increase their bottom line by doing that. And they're just going to show up, and those fifteen to twenty items are going to get plopped on the on your doorstep. If places like GoPuff, Uber, Instacart, right, Postmates, these kind of places continue to exist. I think, and I think they will, Um, I think, yes, I agree with you that acquisition is step two or three, right? Because to get access to an inventory like a Walgreens or whatever for one of these would make everything easy. Listen, Walgreens already, Walgreens is their partner, right? As uh, Walgreens coming in to buy them. The reason it's the most logical is Walgreens already has the distribution points where they can start dropping off their store. Well, locations, right? right? They're everywhere. Yeah, they can they can start dropping off a bunch of locations and substituting that with delivery. And I'm also going to make another bold and absolutely accurate prediction. Uber will start in the next five years splitting up and re- and selling off their, their operation because I just don't think they're ever going to find profitability in their current model. And I think Dark Harsh Rashawi, and I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly, um, even though I deal with foreign names all day, but I'm just saying I think... They're going to get split up, too. So this is episode uh, 21. 21 of Idiots versus Idiots. It's uh, going to come out on the 6th of April, 2021. And I'm just saying that in the next five years, we're going to see Uber getting broken up and sold off in parts and pieces because I simply don't. And I think Postmates will get spun off into its own thing because Uber Eats owns Postmates. I think, right. that, I think that's the one. Or it's Grubhub, one of the two. I just don't think... They continue to exist in the manner in which they do exist, but those, of course, are you know my opinions based on the fact that I'm. <laughs> well, I think warehouse space will become a premium in the future. You and I have talked yeah. about, and yeah. actually, since we first talked about it, we actually come across that Walmart has since done changed an entire Walmart to not a distribution center instead right. of actual walk-in Walmart. I think warehousing spaces, you see apps like this and companies get into the app space, whether it's through acquisition or creating their own product, and right. then you add on top of that driverless cars, which... Yep. You know what I mean? Can I can just put all of this stuff in a car that's going to take it to this address, right, Correct. or whatever. Um, you you add those together, and now you're talking about warehouse space instead becomes a premium, right? Yes. Where this stuff – because, look, we already decide based on data – what a Walgreens carries in any given location that's is correct. data-driven already, right? Who lives in that area? That's why every Walgreens. What your Whole Foods products. carries, what your right. HEB carries, is all Walmart. Walmart's Walmart's, you know, um, logistical infrastructure is absolutely hands down the reason it's Walmart. Right. Well, even from a price standpoint, you can go right. to two different Wal- Walmarts in Austin. East Austin, right. go to a Walmart, and Cedar Park and go to a Walmart. And the same item 
even though yeah. they're 20 minutes apart, are different prices based Correct. on that data being driven. So you, all you're doing is adding an existing technology on top of an app and then starting to learn that. Like you said, what are those 15 items that I can charge a premium for that everybody's going to order, right? Right. And I, I think you're going to see, even in an environment, and again, this is kind of a, a thought process, is I, I you're going to get into, if you've ever been on a, a toll road, there's a toll road here in Austin on Mopac that they have what they call surge pricing, right. where if you drive on the toll road at 2 o'clock in the morning, it costs, let's just say $5. It's if you drive on the 50. toll road, well, whatever. But if you drive on the toll road, though, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, it can be like $15, right, right. instead of $1.50. You think that if they think that they could get away with it on an app like this, if you want it right. delivered to you at 11 o'clock at a night when there's hour, not a yeah. lot of drivers, it's more expensive than it would be at, you know what I mean, 5 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it is. Right. I'm just saying you could probably get away with it. And if you could. Yeah, but at 11 o'clock, I'm already, you know, two cocktails deep. I'm paying whatever. <laughs> we, we, we'll deal with the bills next year. We'll deal with the Amex bill when it shows up, and I ain't paying anyway. They already know That's that. Right. That's I, right. American Express keeps keep saying you're pre-approved. I don't know what data they're working on, but <laughs> they believe in me. Okay? Thanks. They believe in Which me. Which is so. a hard stance to come from, but go ahead. Right. Nonetheless, I think, you know, that kind of wraps up what we had about GoPuff again. Hey, GoPuff, reach out to Danny from Idiots vs. Idiots. He's going to help you not be called GoPuff anymore because the name doesn't right. make any sense. That's true.